Do you think this vote is going to affect you guys at all? No. Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, that's right. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I don't. Do you think you've mentioned that, you know, other people are going to be paying the price of this decision, maybe our grandchildren. What effect do you think this is going to have on the economy? Although we'll take, probably take a five-year to ten-year drop, in 20 years' time we'll be back where we are like 20 years ago and we'll be strong again. What happens now? Because we don't know what's going to happen uh, two years, five years down, down the line. I guess the country will recover, but short term, the pound is down. Um, this will hit the, uh, the, uh, the economic rating of the country. Uh, it's very likely it will be downgraded. The interest payments will be more. So, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But you get what you ask for. Um, I don't know, because like I said, I don't know, like, what we... what See, like, he knows about the jobs and stuff, that we're going to get more jobs. I didn't even know that, so... It's going to be uh, a rough ride. The market's turned towards equilibrium, so I think everything will end up where it's meant to be, if that makes any kind of sense. Uh, the guy from the Bank of England... He said, uh, we've got things in place to, to deal with it all, so we've got to trust him, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> so if you look at a lot of the headlines today, we're using a lot of jargon saying things like the FTSE is falling and the value of the pound is really low and the Bank of England is doing this and that. How do you think people feel about that, that jargon? Do you think they can follow those arguments? If they had, they wouldn't have vote leave. They did it purely voting with their stomachs. Most of it is totally confusing. I just wish they'd speak proper English so we could understand, you know what I mean? Because not everybody knows about stocks and shares and, you know, and how the pound's doing and things like this, you know, because we live in the real world. I don't really watch the news because I don't get it. I don't understand it. And uh, there's a lot of people like that thing. What about the FTSE 100? Do you understand that? I've never heard of it in my <laughs> life. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know. I don't know, no, I don't. People revolt against realism and they want to be in Never Never Land. Well, good luck, because it don't exist. <laughs> when you don't understand what they're trying to tell you and, you're, and it's going over your head and they're bullying you into what their beliefs are, that's not right. We're supposed to be a democratic country, so we have the right to make our own minds up. It didn't really make any sense... Uh... They weren't really offering any truthful information. You keep watching it, don't you? You keep watching both sides to just to get all the information. But I just think it was too much from everyone, yeah. and it was so confusing. And so I many people still didn't know the day before that what were they going to vote. We found ourselves one day listening to the the, the Brexit group uh, uh, saying. Uh, and then we think, oh yeah, well, definitely, it's it's not right to be in the EU. And then then you listen to the counter arguments of the uh, Remainers, and you think, oh no, we, we really ought to stay. Uh, uh, and that's the way you you end up going for to, for day after day. And to what extent do you feel like people understand the economic consequences of this choice on either side of the campaign? Well, I, I think for for me on on the Leave side, there was no the, the, the economics were just fallacy. It was all about immigration. It's mainly confusing, um, scaremongering, you know, just trying to frighten people. And I think, to be honest, to bully people to stay in. People sometimes use a, a gut decision on things or, or their own particular circumstances in their own lives um, are more adversely affected. And so, therefore, the, the economists and, uh, and what they're deciding down in Westminster doesn't really matter to them. Um, honestly, I just don't care about it. Like, if I, if I was interested in it, then I'd learn stuff about it. But, like, I'm just... I'm not really interested in it at all. There's too much, like, debates and stuff, and I just prefer to live my life. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the campaigns were awful. People just had to go with their gut feel. But, uh, yeah. Just tried to understand the last few weeks. But, yeah, that's but, right. But the average got half person a don't really... Um, need to do they you just bob along and you just like think well whatever they're going to do they're going to do anyway and we just bob along trying to get on with our lives yeah. <laughs> so when you were looking for information to decide how to vote where did you go 
same as everybody else, newspapers, you know, listening to the politicians, because we have politicians around here, listening to them, watching the TV and that lot, and most of it goes over your head, because you don't understand most of what they say, so... <laughs> so you think this might lead to people understanding it a bit more, coming to terms with these, with all I of think, this jargon a bit it more? May, it's an opportunity for people, what's someone to explain it in lay, in, in lay terms. You remember they started a scheme years ago on plain English, I wonder if maybe we'd have something like that that apply to, to finance, because it is, it is pretty complicated. And if you could sort of make a call out to economists and politicians and journalists and, and ask them something that would make it just a bit easier next time round when we have a big economic decision to make, what could they do better to just make us feel a bit more informed? Uh, perhaps be a bit more honest uh, with people in the country. I think it would be great if, um, if it was explained in easier terms and, and we had that plain speaking concept. Well, I guess they, they need to speak in our, t in our language, what we understand, what the everyday person understands. But maybe we need to listen to it a bit more and understand it on an everyday basis.